Spiritual Teaching 273 Love Each Other 1. You have descended so much and you have moved away from the spiritual in such a way that you consider everything supernatural that which, because it belongs to the spirit, is completely natural. That's how you call the divine, that's how you look at everything that belongs to your spirit and that is a mistake. What has happened is that you only look and perceive what is close to your senses or within the reach of your human intelligence, and to what is beyond the senses and of the mind you have considered it supernatural. 2. It is time that you penetrate to the bottom of my teachings that reveal the truth that life contains, so that you consider yourselves my disciples and soon you begin to be teachers. 3. The disciple is the one who learns, the teacher who puts into practice my teachings. That's how I want you to be, because if only you would learn and hide my wisdom in your heart or if you altered my teachings, you would be like those hypocritical Pharisees whom I judged so much at that time to prove their falsehood to them. 4. The path is narrow and you must walk carefully so that you do not touch neither extreme, that is, do not become familiar with the spiritual do not fall into fanaticism. 5. When you achieve the balance that must exist between the spirit and the flesh, you will see how easy it is to exist and how flat the way. Step by step you will go down the path, taking advantage of all the opportunities that life offers you to the progress of your spirit and when you reach the thresholds of spiritual life, when the hour to say goodbye to the world that gave you shelter and to the body that served you, let there be no resistance in the one or the other, that the spirit does not wish to extend the life of its body, nor the flesh to retain more time to the spirit. 6. What joy and how much light the spirit will find as it enters its new home and how much peace and conformity it will know to leave in the hearts of those who belong to him on earth. 7. I consider that the environment that reigns in the world is contrary to spirituality. For that reason it will be very meritorious that you manage to get rid of the obstacles that prevent you from overtaking on the road. 8. I have sent you a message by means of which you can live in the world without being contaminated. 9. Learn with my strength to overcome, fight to rise above human miseries and once you have elevated your life and liberated your spirit, do not descend anymore. 10. There are no crossroads in my path, but it is necessary to watch and pray, because on the sides of the path the brush grows and the treacherous wolf sometimes hides among her. Watch and pray so that you are not surprised and that you are rather ready to surprise those who hide to stumble those who want to walk on the good path or to steal their faith. 11. I announced that my people would rise again in the world when humanity was drinking its greatest cup of bitterness. That is why I am sending to earth my emissaries, my peasants, my soldiers and prophets, because the time of the fight is coming. 12. My people, it is not only the people who have listened to me through the spokespersons. My people will spread throughout the earth and his children will be all those who bear witness to my truth, all who open breaches of light to the all spirits. Let them fight the weeds and announce the third era. 13. Spiritualize yourselves and you will be able to understand and fulfill your mission. Thus, when in other lands other envoys arise they will hear from each other, and they will know how to unite and help each other spiritually, fighting with the force of thought the discord, disunity and war that has invaded the world. 14. Do not fear, people, I receive your merits made until today. Do not stop at the first steps, do not conform to the first works you have done. Walk slowly and firmly and you will achieve triumph. 15. Your merits will not always have to wait for you to reach the spiritual realm to collect the reward, but here in your world you will see them awarded. 16. Here your body will have health and strength and in the spiritual life there will be light and true joy. 17. He who has come before me in search of wisdom has never felt disappointed. I have seen that there has been no obstacle that stops you in your desire to hear my word, and how could I not reward your effort and your sacrifices? Only I know what you have to do to evolve to be able to reach these places and remain with me listening to me. 18. The time has come for men to break their chains for themselves, tear off the blindfold from their eyes, and seek the true path. 19. Man aspires to possess a light that allows him to know what is lawfully his, as well as also know everything that is really forbidden. 
20 spiritually humanity is an ignorant creature. The countless prejudices that surround her and the threats and anathemas that weigh on him have been the cause of his disinterest in the spiritual. 21. Only my light is what is awakening the spirits. It is my voice that invites you to meditation and it is my force that makes them persevere and fight to reach the goal. 22. Humanity will soon free itself from its prejudices. Like someone who strips off a threadbare old garment and with craving will lift your gaze and mind beyond the barriers that have long prevented you from evolving. 23. The unfounded fears that for centuries have nurtured men in their hearts will also disappear when they remember that Christ was the one who came to open the doors of the spiritual kingdom and that, having not revealed all that he had to teach humanity, because it was not yet the right time, he promised his new coming in an era that it would be full of light, inspiration, and spiritual revelations. 24. In me men will find courage to emancipate themselves from the yoke of their ignorance. 25. How do you expect peace to be made on earth and wars to end? That men regenerate and diminish sin if they lack the spiritual knowledge that is the basis, principle, and foundation of life. 26. Truly I tell you, as long as my truth is not understood or practiced, your existence on earth will be like a building built on quicksand. 27. Fewer people have woken up than those who are still cold or indifferent to what is spiritual. They are not concerned or anguished at the chaos that reigns, attributing everything to superficial causes. They settle for their poor understanding and say, why clarify mysteries or try to penetrate unfathomable if I comply with all the obligations imposed by those who rule in the material, as well as by he who guide me spiritually through religions, isn't there the principle of well that Christ taught? And with these thoughts, they calm down and persuade themselves that they are fulfilling his spiritual mission. 28. But I tell you that this fulfillment of your duties is apparent and not real, that in front of your consciousness and before God, there is very little that you do good because your life is superficial, your insignificant spiritual knowledge, your works full of selfishness and vanity. 29. In front of your fellow men whom you can easily deceive, you may be faithfully fulfilling your spiritual and human duties. But before your consciousness and your father, you will not be able to fake appearances, because there the truth arises and this is that men are spiritually stationed. 30. This has caused the struggle to appear between them, while the awakened speak of spirituality, gifts, powers, and revelations, the lethargic rise up saying that they have been dividing and confusing humanity and creating doubts and uncertainties about beliefs. 31. That fight will be inevitable so that the light emerges and the truth shines. B. Until then when you realize that the truth does not establish division and that my doctrine, having an essence, the truth could not come to do work of division or discord among men although at first the force them to fight each other to reach the light. 32. Each one will wield his weapons, some spiritual ones, others those of the mind, others material ones. 33. Those who entrust themselves only to the force of their physical weapons will have to succumb, because the triumph he will lean on the side of those who employ spiritual weapons, whose nature and strength is greater. 34. Although my doctrine in the second era, revealed everything, spiritualism comes to explain and clarify everything that was a mystery among men, without whose help they would never penetrate to the depths of revelations. 35. Truly I tell you, only the Lamb could untie the Book of Seven Seals to show you all its content. 36. Practice this doctrine, people. The time has come to show the world the truth of my word. I have called you to become the emissaries, who take to humanity the message that it so much needs to know. 37. I do not come to tell you that when my word reaches the peoples of the earth, all men will become spiritualists immediately. No, for now it will be enough that spirituality is applied to each religion and you will see how, when men least think about it, they will all have been approaching the same point, that is, to harmony, unity, and to the understanding that has never existed between one and the other. 38. The weeds will be uprooted and wheat will grow in its place a symbol of abundance, work, progress, and of peace. 39. Welcome to all those who come looking for the light to illuminate their path. 
40. Be with me. I am the luminous lighthouse that shines on all paths. This light is not new. From the beginning of the life of man is shining in his consciousness. But man having been created to penetrate by himself into the mysteries of spiritual life, it was necessary for the word to become a man in Jesus and to draw back the veil of the mysteries. 41. By chance, all humanity in its different generations has managed to reach the top of Calvary to meditate in the infinite love that made Jesus die at the hands of men. No, humanity has not wanted to look at all at that light that the Divine Master came to reveal to him. He preferred the light of science that scrutinizes the mysteries of nature. He preferred the power from the earth to the greatness of the Spirit. 42. My light has not stopped shining for a single moment in the consciences, but the man being still small and needing for his father to approach him in some way, I sent the spirit of Elijah with the blessed message of a new age. Elijah brought to the world the revelation of the way I would come to communicate with men, and as my forerunner opened the understanding of a man to speak through his lips, but also manifested through looks and inspirations to announce that after communication through human understanding, communication would come from spirit to spirit. 43. There will be those who say that my return was not necessary, but those who think so, it will be because they do not know that Christ he discovers the hypocrisy of the Pharisees, throws the merchants out of the temple and does not bow down to those who call themselves great. 44. Those who suffer need me, those who hunger and thirst for justice, those who long for light and elevation, those who understand that the spirit must advance without stopping. They all call me in their prayer, in their pain they invoke me and they ask, when will I come? They know that humanity urgently needs me, my word, my bomb and of my wonders. 45. Do you see the peoples in eternal struggles? Do you see those wars that are the most emphatic denial of love that I taught? Do you look at religions, enemies of each other, still calling themselves Christian and preaching my maxim of love one another? 46. Of those wars motivated by human ambitions and those divergences of creeds, how much misery and how much bitterness has fallen on mankind. 47. I have brought you a seed at this time, which is just beginning to germinate in the heart of this people, but I tell you the truth, that this doctrine will move humanity and will be believed as a true revelation of God. Everybody, those of you who have received a mission or position in my work, have the duty to present my doctrine in all its purity. 48. Spiritualism has nothing to do with religious rites, traditions, or ceremonies. It is above all external worship. For what I tell you, that whoever mixes the practices learned from sex or religions into my doctrine, becomes a profaner. 49. How could your brothers admire the light of this revelation if you hid it behind the veil of your materialities and mystifications? 50. Spiritualism is not a mixture of religions, it is the purest doctrine and perfect in its simplicity. It is the light of God that descends to the human spirit in this third era. 51. I tell you all this, people, that you are the first seed of mine at this time, so that you embrace the truth and it will not accuse humanity of false or profane. 52. If you descend into fanaticism, it will be your fault, because the book of knowledge has been before your eyes, illuminating the spirit. 53. You who come from different paths, take my word for it, take my seed and sow it in your lands. See that it is the truth that the master comes to leave you. 54. Do not believe yourself to be perfect for carrying the knowledge of a perfect doctrine, but if you try to comply with the greatest clarity that a human can be capable of, I will put in your path all those who long for a word of true comfort. 55. Bear in mind that no matter how clean and full of love your works are, you will not stop being attacked, then you will have the opportunity to teach with examples of forgiveness, nobility, and charity, how to defend the truth that you feel you carry in your heart. You will not defend your material temples, nor will you defend your names or your personality, but the truth has been deposited in you. 56. Multitudes who come before me with sadness and fatigue in your heart, listen to me, because I know that you will return to peace, to faith, to joy with the essence of my word. 57. You come barefoot with injured souls, 
because in the vast desert you left the sandals that protected you from the pebbles and burning sands. But here you will regain what you have lost, because I love you, and again I come to give you proof of it. 58. How could you dim the light of your faith? How could you stray so far from the true path that even the intuition that you have in your spirit, had it been lost in you? 59. Only my divine manifestation can let you know that you are in a new time, because you have been sleeping. 60. There, in the depths of your being, an unknown anxiety was leaving itself felt and a strange thirst was dominating you without you realizing its origin. When that need became distressing, it was because the time had come that you would receive my new message. 61. Hunger and thirst for the spirit, it was what tormented you, hunger for truth and for peace, thirst for love and light. 62. I wanted my word to be like crystalline and fresh water, whose essence contained the true and eternal sustenance of the spirit, in such a way that when you heard me, you would surrender to me, like that tired pilgrim who finding a source, he gets rid of the bundle he is carrying and throws himself into the desired liquid, hungry for freshness. 63. Not all of you have brought spiritual thirst, the one who has truly felt it, has simply quenched it with my word, on the other hand, there are many who, even hearing me repeatedly, complain that their pain and problems remain equal, is that they do not seek my essence, but the goods of the world. 64. Understand this well so that you will never be deceived. 65. Notice that there are those who do not lack what is necessary. They live surrounded by comforts and yet something obscures their life. Something distresses them. Something is missing. It is the presence of the spiritual in their life. That they long for. It is the absence of that light, the one that darkens their life. When they have come to listen to me, inwardly they have exclaimed, This was what I was looking for, what I expected, what I needed. Others, on the other hand, have come here complaining of having lost property, health, affections, and the emptiness of their hearts has not been filled with my word. But as soon as they have recovered what they had lost, they have wandered away without even remembering this heavenly word that they once heard. 66. Not everyone is in time to feel or understand this revelation. While some stay, others leave, not everyone thirsts for me. It is because the need for the spiritual is not the same in some as in others. 67. I want to tell you to look closely at humanity, peoples and nations, so that you realize how they have made of their life a painful desert, whose burning sun depresses them and whose aridity dominates and exhausts them. Don't you present the immense thirst that is accumulating in the hearts of men? Well, the oasis is also forming shade and freshness of perennial and crystalline waters, so that in it he calms his need for truth, his thirst for love and peace. 68. Many will come before the spring and drink its waters, they will say as you do. This is what I was looking for. But also many others will come before him believing to find what they have lost in the world and disappointed. They will turn their back on me and they will deny that in this revelation there is any truth. They will leave, but everything is planned and prepared for them to return. When at last the true thirst of the Spirit appears and invokes me in its desert, saying, Father, forgive us and grant us a new opportunity to come to the knowledge of your truth. And then, I who had already forgiven, when they haughtily despise the water of my spring and the bread of my table, I will offer them my way so that in him leave your fatigue, so that you heal, fill with peace and rise through my light. My peace be with you.